I get to play with a lot of bike bags on the channel, but there are a handful that I use the most often. And this video is a review, a very long-term review, I think three years of one of them. If you've watched any of our videos in the last three years, you've probably seen this bag on the front of the bike. It's the bag I took with us on our recent desert ramble, as well as the bag I took with us to Spain. And it's been on countless review bikes and just a bunch of random trips. And that bag is this guy. This is the gold back by Bags by Burt. I actually can't believe it's been three years since I got this bag and actually bought the second one. So how has it held up? Were there things in the longer term that uh, I kind of wish were different? And should you get this style bag or the kind of bike packing sausage bag? The gold back is a Caradice style seat bag which has been modified so you can run it on the handlebars it's a thing look it up get on instagram it's about 16 inches wide 11 inches tall and six inches deep and it has a stated capacity of 18 liters so fairly roomy as well as an additional one liter of storage in these two side external pockets right here this bag has what's called a long flap design so let's say you're like me and you're a maximalist bike tourer and you need to stuff even more stuff. This flap opens up and it can swallow all the things. Even as a maximalist bike tourer, uh, I've only deployed this maybe like once or twice just to give you a sense of how roomy the bag is. It's got an internal stiffener here. You can see it's this white bit. And this, for the most part, helps it keep its shape even when empty, which is a big plus over the sausage bags that kind of just are flaccid. Other things, you'll see this kind of ladder lock on uh, the straps here. These clips here, they're actually split on the back. So you can actually move these up and down to really refine the fit. Or you can use these as just kind of lashing points if you have some elastic cordage. So pretty versatile depending on your load size. No, the bag is not waterproof in the same way like a plastic bag is, but it is highly water resistant. Uh, I've ridden this in some really rainy conditions and the bag has kept the contents nice and dry. Just don't be dumb and toss the damn thing in the water. Some, some unique features of the bag is you'll notice this kind of capped shoulder. This helps it uh, keep the water out and is very reminiscent of the old school uh, Domkey camera bags. I know Jay, the maker, uh, was a photographer and filmmaker, so he's probably familiar with those Domkeys. Another interesting thing about this bag is its use of dowels. Uh, similar to the Caradice, there's an internal dowel here that stiffens up the bag and also gives something for these volet straps to wrap onto. What Jay added into the mix was the use of the double dowel. That's right, two dowels in one bag. And this probably doesn't make sense if you've never put a bag like this on your front, but without an additional stiffener here, they tend to wrap around the head tube. This dowel functions to really give the bag its form. Three years later, the, the dowels are still here. They're still serving their function. In these newer bags, the internal dowel has been moved to the outside, which is, uh, I think, a lot better because you no longer have to open the bag to reach in to undo these straps to get the bag on and off your bike. Uh, this bag definitely works best with some sort of standoff uh, to prevent it from leaning into your head tube. So that's why I almost always pair it uh, with the Swood Cycles uh, T-Brack thing. Okay, so how has it held up? Uh, I've carried camping loads, camera loads, fishing loads, painting loads, uh, groceries with this bag. I've taken on smooth roads, dirt roads, some trails, and I even used it as a carry-on bag when we went to Spain. This particular generation didn't have shoulder straps, so I had to jury rig a shoulder strap to here, and it was uh, actually pretty uncomfortable. But it looks as if newer versions of the gold back do have purpose-sewn uh, D-loops to run a shoulder bag. In terms of what I like about this bag, uh, you know, the capacity is a huge one. I can carry my whole mini tripod and painting kit and all the art supplies in this bag and no problem. When we go camping, I can carry my quilt, my sleeping pad, uh, my pillow and clothes uh, all in this main compartment and have additional space for tools. I think it can carry probably as much as I would want to carry in a front bag without a rack. The second thing I really like about this bag is the durability. I mean, there's really no loose seams. There's a lot of scuffs, but this kind of a wax canvas like Cordura has, has been really strong. Probably the highest wear area has been 
on the bottom. Sometimes when I overstuff this bag, it'll tend to droop and start touching the front tire on rough terrain. So you can see a couple spots where that's happened. Uh, it's gotten a little shiny, but no holes. That's, that's a big thing here. This part uh, is, is pretty well protected. Third thing I really love about this bag three years later is that it just works for my packing style. Uh, for the loads I like to carry and for how I like to pack, this bag is ideal. Uh, with a bag like this, you know, you've got a lid and you can actually place things inside instead of like stuffing things. You're not jamming your arm in there like a oaky noodler. I don't know how many people are gonna get that reference, but Google it. So there, biggest difference, placing as opposed to stuffing. And and also, if you wanna get something out, you don't have to like pull everything out. You just open you know, the trunk here and get what you need. Oh, what are the cons? If you're an ultralight packer or weight weenie, which I'm not, uh, this probably isn't your jam. Also, if you require absolute uh, plastic bag level waterproofness, or if all your belongings are made out of tissue paper or all you carry is tissue paper in the front bags, then, then also this bag isn't for you. Small bikes can be problematic. Again, I'm on that verge. I ride a 52 and 54 and you need at least like six to six and a half inches of height difference between your handlebar and the top of your tire. I'd err on almost seven to seven and a half if you overstuff this and you're running a big tire or run some kind of bag support or mini rack. Another con is the cost. This bag is not inexpensive. Uh, it's $240. It's made by one person. It does take a couple of weeks to deliver, uh, but hey, it's made in the US. Things are expensive here, inflation. And given how much I've used it over three years, uh, it's amortized pretty well. I just use this a ton. And if I have to get rid of, let's say like 98% of my bags, uh, this would be one of the bags I would keep. Okay, opinion time uh, for me. I think this bag uh, is better and would probably serve more people better than the bike packing sausage bag. You can run it empty and it doesn't look like this weird sad flap on your bike. You can use it for groceries and commuting beyond just adventures and already someone is typing, well, I commute with my bike packing sausage. You can, you can do that, but I think this is a better solution. I also think it's easier to pack because you're actually, you know, packing and placing things rather than stuffing. This bag just makes more sense to me in nearly every application that I use bags like this. Again, I'm not an ultralight weight weenie racer. If you're into that, then the, then the sausage bag makes more sense. If there were things I wish were different, like I mentioned, uh, having shoulder straps, which have been added, and also moving the dowel to from the inside to the outside, which has happened in newer versions of this bag. I do wish sometimes that this bag was a little bit smaller. It is uh, a lot of bag for like smaller day ride bags, which is, which is, hold on, where this bag comes in. This is the uh, big tail grab, and there is a mini tail grab, also by Bags by Bird. And again, it attaches to your handlebars. You can see that whole external dowel thing and how much easier it makes it to take this on and off your bike. This one even has a nice little front flap here. And aside from the size, this has the really nice touch of incorporating the rando closure. So again, this goes over your stem. So as you're riding, you can undo it, reach in and get things. These just arrived. I'm working on a review of these. Uh, I'll be curious to see if I like this as much as I have liked the gold back over the last three years. So I'm curious, what is your most used bag? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, found it educational, informative, entertaining, hit that subscribe button. That is free. Or consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon, where you get access to giveaways, discount codes, and it also unlocks all the warm and fuzzies for supporting one of the few non-competitive channels on YouTube. As always, keep the supple side down.